Hey guys, I'm Maddie. What's up guys, I'm Chase. And today we're going to be talking to you about how to get letters of recommendation. Let's get to it. So before we get started, as always, please like and subscribe to our channel because it really supports us. And then also make sure to leave a comment down below telling us what um, you liked about this video or what other videos you'd like to see. If you put a comment down below asking for something, odds are we're going to deliver. So to get into it, um, here's the list that we think the, this is like the golden amount. If you could get these, this would be amazing. Um, have two science faculty write you a letter of rec, one humanities, one supervisor, at least one physician, and your advisor. So we'll dive deeper into those. For the physician, I think especially, look at what programs you're applying to. If you're applying to applying to MD programs, then it's best to have an MD letter writer. If you're applying to DO programs, it's best to have a DO letter writer. If you're applying to both, it's best to have two letters, one from each specialty. Yeah, we ran into that issue. I only got an MD, Chase only got a DO. I initially only got accepted to MD schools. Chase initially only got accepted to DO schools. So it was pretty evident, especially since our metrics were so similar, that that letter of recommendation played a huge role. Mm -hmm. So how to get those letter of recommendations? Uh, it starts from the beginning, especially for your faculty members at your university. For your science and humanities majors or classes, attend class, sit in the front, ask questions, be an active member in that classroom. Mm -hmm. okay. You want them to remember you. Yeah, my advice would be just like from the beginning of my undergrad, I was like keeping a lookout on what professors I vibed with and what professors I didn't. And so um, I was like, okay, I know that I want to take this professor again because they really seem to like me, I like them, and I think that they would write me a good letter of recommendation later on. So just always have that in the back of your head because that's um, I felt like that was really helpful for me and Chase as well. Right, and it's best if you can have that letter writer be someone you took at least two classes with. Mm -hmm. You can have just one course if you were super involved and went to their you know, SIs and their office hours. But if you can go to multiple courses, they're gonna know you better and be able to speak about you better. Yeah, they'll have a stronger letter of recommendation for you. So like Chase said, make sure you're going to this professor's office hours, make sure you're going to the review session, try to sit in the front. I know that's super intimidating, but sit in the front, ask questions, just like be an active member and actually care about what they're teaching because they're gonna recognize that you care and they're gonna like that. Right. So now about the physician letter. We think that you should shadow that physician for at least 20 hours. I know that's rough, um, but about at least 20 hours, hopefully more, and over a long period of time, at least a year. Um, you don't want to go shadow them once and then be like, hey doc, will you write me this? Because it won't turn out good. Um, yeah, we talk about this in another video in regard to shadowing, but like you don't want to just go shadow this person three times for like eight hours each because honestly they're probably you're either going to get bounced around or they're not going to be super attentive towards you for the entire time so it's better to go for like four hours at a time five to ten times over two or three years because then they'll really get to know you and right. what's going on in your life so the next tip is ask your letter writers to write you a letter of recommendation early um, Find out when you need that letter of recommendation delivered by, depending on what application service you're going through, or if your school has certain requirements. But be one of the first people to ask. If they, if a letter writer has 10 slots that they allow, you don't want to be the 11th person. There are professors who will only write 10 letter of recommendations. So you want to be on the early end of that, be the first, second, or third person, because they're going to be more dedicated to writing that letter better than the ninth or 10th person. And they won't forget. Um, there were a couple of professors who had like been there, done that, and writing the letters, and they got a little lazy. And so just making sure, if you're at the top of their list, you're gonna be the first one done, and you're not gonna have to worry about making sure that letter of rec gets in um, on time. Right, I had one letter of writer who was after the deadline, so that was a huge <laughs> problem. Um, it was a big headache, but we ended up getting it worked out, but just don't put yourself in that situation. Yeah, and make sure when you ask them, you say this sentence. Are you able to write a unique, strong letter of recommendation for me? Because if they are, if they are not able to, 
you do not want them to write your letter and it's okay if they say no because a lot of professors literally have a stock letter that they just fill in a couple of blanks and send it out and you don't want that you want this letter to be unique you want it to be meaningful and that's how you're going to get a spot in medical school so um if they can't do it say okay thanks anyways and go find somebody go find somebody else who can yeah and then when you do show up to ask bring the hard piece of paper that has the instructions for how to upload your letter of recommendation and then when you're done go home and then send a confirmation email to that professor or that person with the information included in that email as well. That way there's no chance that it gets lost. The last thing you want is to be hoping that a letter is going to come through and then it just never happens. And so then once it's all said and done, I, for me it was after I already knew where I was going. So this was like March of my senior year. I wrote thank you letters to all of my letter writers and then I brought them all cookies. Um, Chase got one present for one of his professors who he was really close with but I just brought them all cookies and they were really excited about it and thankful and excited to see um, where their letters had helped me get to. So that's um, just something nice that you can do for them. Yeah, thank you notes are a requirement. Mm -hmm. Yeah, always, always, always thank you notes. And um, even if you don't get accepted to medical school, they still want to know. They took the time to write the letter. So just make sure you thank them with a, a hard copy of a thank you letter. Yeah. So that's all we have to share. I hope that helps. Obviously, like and subscribe. And then leave a comment down below. If you have a specific video that you want to see, um, we promise we will look at it and seriously consider making that video. 